Good morning, good morning to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice that can see my face. This is the show, The Prophet Speak, and I'm Prophet Tom Ingham live in the studios. My lines will be open, not right now, but they'll be open a little bit later at 256-369-1688. like to say good morning to each and every one of you. I'd like to invite you all. I strongly recommend you in the surrounding areas <clears throat> of Gaston, Alabama, at 12.30 today, we will be doing a Bible study. I recommend that you all that listen to the program, that you come out. You know, the scriptures say, forsake not to send yourselves together. That you will come out. Come hear the word. Come assemble yourself with other saints of God. Gaston's a little bit more advanced with believers in that area. It's not just me. It's not a beginner's course. But actually, I'm able to feed the children of God with milk and meat. So therefore, wherever you at and whatever you need, I can get it to you. But I need you to come out if you're available. 1230, Gaston, Alabama, give me more. Give me a phone call at after the show, 205-568-7038. Or you can contact Minister Wibble for directions to his home at 256-441-9095. And today, I, I got a special message, especially because of the hot and trending topic right now. Not only were the, 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 the people of God asking me about it, but the world is trending. This vaccine is trending, the information about this vaccine. You're seeing people in the profession of NFL sports, assistant coaches, who are quitting their jobs. People, them people make good money. They are quitting their jobs because they would not be forced to take this vaccine. The stipulations that the NFL is saying, we're not forcing you to take it, but they got so many persecuted situations for them if they don't take it. And that's not fair. That's not fair at all for people to be put in a position that if uh, they refuse to make a decision about their own body, how their job is persecuting them with all types of different fines and different situations. You had Andre Hopkins, I think his name is, his first name is Andre, but his last name is Hopkins, receiver for the St. Louis Cardinals, who even contemplating his career in the NFL about this decision. He posted some on Instagram, he later took it down, but they read out what he put up there and he was making it known that he's not with nobody telling him what to do about his body of injecting something in it. And today, you know, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. But I'm going to tell you, I've got to make this sure before I put the paid advertiser up there. I want to make sure people understand the people of God that already have took, people who say that Jesus Christ is their Lord, that have already taken this vaccine. Listen, that which is done has been done. It's framed. I'm not condemning you. God is not condemning you from this point, but God is wanting you to see where you are not at when you begin to examine yourself in the faith as 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. But let's move on from this because my job as a man of God is to put you in the right place and good standards with God through his word and persuade you to believe the gospel. Now, I'm believing you. They're not trying to get you to believe, to do what I do. I believe it because I believe and walk the way I walk but to get you fully persuaded in your own mind to believe what is written. Notice I said what is written. That's where the persuasion got to come. It can't be persuaded to look at the mindset and say, well, if it worked for profit, it will work for me. That ain't how this worked. The seven sons of Sceva found that out fast when they said, well, we're going to do what Paul said in the same name that Paul did. They didn't get the same results. Paul could cast out devils. They couldn't because they weren't fully persuaded in their own mind to have Christ in them. They, was trying, they were exorcists trying to perform what they call exorcism to cast out a devil. But exorcism and cast out devil is two different things. You have to have Christ in you. Satan can't cast out Satan. People who perform exorcists are of the devil. All you can do is stir one up. But they, we see that the seven sons of Sceva got their clothes beat off them. But we're going to open up with the paid advertiser, and I want you people to know 
Listen to me closely. Where you at is where you at. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable because, like, man, he beating up on people who don't took the vaccine. No, let me get you into a place where you trust the king. Get the king inside you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As Paul said, examine yourself, whether you've been in faith, prove your own self. No, you're not your own self. How did Jesus Christ is in you? You got to know he's in you. That's what's going to make you fully persuaded. Oh, I don't need that. I don't need no vaccine. I got the almighty God inside me. But that persuasion can't come from me. It has to come from the word of God that I preach unto you. And I'm going to point you to the scriptures. And I got a special teaching today that shows you. We're going to talk about some deep stuff. As you've seen the young ladies from Silicago, not Silicago, Phoenix City, Miss Sandra. She was trying to make it be my opinion. Today I'm going to show you in the Word of God. It's not my opinion. I've been trying to tell you. I never should tell you what I believe or think. I show you what does say the Lord. But there I'm going to go a little step further. And maybe she'll change her mindset about how she feel about me telling people this is what the Lord said. Because I didn't make, I didn't write the book. But I can read it to you without reading it to you. I can quote it to you. But let's open up with our paid advertisers and then try to hurry up and get in the middle of the Word. I mean, get to the Word. This is Blings and Thing with Miss Tori Rigby. Um, Gas in Alabama, the name of it is Blings and Things. You can order from them online, www.blingsandthings.com, or you can call Sister Felicia at 256-441-4229, and she can give you directions to their store, which is in Broad Street in Gas in Alabama. Either way, you can, rip, you know, they're both co-owners, the mother and the daughter, and they do good business. They got real good jewelry, too. They got real good ladies' jewelry. They're woman's boutique. Okay? So give a call at 256-441-4229 or contact me later after the show for any information. The next one should be Dress Out Boutique, Minister Wilbur's store, a men and women's boutique. It's a men and women clothing store. It sells, he sells uh, all the, the items for men, the jogging suits for women, the dresses and the, the, the the different things for women, whatever women, are, whatever the most in style thing, Minister Wilbur usually have it just like blings and things. They, they keep up with the latest fashions. Minister Wilbur is located in East Gas in Alabama. And you can reach him at 256 441 9095. He also do the fogging business, the germ killing business. You can reach him for that if you need that with these numbers rising up with this um, coronavirus. You can reach him with that. So, therefore, you can reach him at 256-441-9095, 256-441-9095. So, we got that out of the way. Give me a call if you need any of that information after the show, eight minutes after the hour. I want to open up with a word of prayer, and I want to really make people feel comfortable listening to the Word of God because, it's, listen, you, you can't put it on me. It's in the book that you carry that you say you believe you say by. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord when I preach it. It's coming out of the same book. I'm not introducing to you another book or another gospel. I'm just going to show you things in the gospel that you probably ain't never even heard or read. That's the fault of you not studying to show yourself approved, but when you go in these religious facilities, who do not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? They got another gospel. They'll twist the scriptures, and we're going to show you that later on. But let me hear up and get off into it. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive our trespassers. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to use me today, Father, as your mighty vessel to preach and teach to the people your ways, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, according to your will, according to your word that is written. Let it be so, Father, open up the hearts and minds and listen that they receive it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You did right now, I wish you would call a friend or a neighbor, or an enemy. But call someone and tell them that I'm on the air because I've got a very important message for you to hear. Because 
this message I'm about to preach to you and teach to you, you won't hear it too many places. Matter of fact, when I open up the lines, I want to know how many people have heard what I'm about to preach and teach. Have you heard it? Or call and let me know that you have not heard it. Either way, I want to hear from you. But you to have the word of God with you. Just write the scripture down. I'm not going to go to a specific place and quote too many scriptures, but I want to put line upon line and precept upon precept. So I'm going to be going here a little and there a little. In the book of Corinthians, the first book in the third chapter, and in verse 18, I love this because I remember when God began to show me and I asked the Lord about certain things and he began to show me things that's written in the word. And he began to show me that the apostle Paul quoted from the patriarch Job. And I'm going to tell you something, it's beautiful. Because if you want to know something, if you search the scriptures, God will give you the information about anything that goes on on this earth. In the first Corinthians, the third chapter and verse 18, 18, first Corinthians three and 18, they give you about 30 seconds to turn there. Cause I want to show you something people. There's a reason that you see these scientists because we talking about this vaccine. Now you did have already taken this vaccine. Listen, I'm not picking at you and I'm not trying to damn you. You've already done what you've done. God has showed mercy on you. I pray and hope that the, and, and that the side effects of that vaccine does not take place on you. Because God show mercy. God's a God of mercy. And I'm going to say something that will probably blow some of your ears off because you hear me preaching about trusting God and not trusting man with this vaccine. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's an actual place that I will roll my sleeve up to take that vaccine. Some of you say, what? No, it won't be for the healing or the fear of catching the corona. But if there's a door open for me to be able to go out of this country, to go preach the gospel and do the works of faith with power, to manifest the healing power and the working of miracles that God have given me power to do, and they told me, can't let you out. You can't get into that country except you got to take that vaccine. Me and the Lord would have to talk. Because I would beseech the Lord. I would, I would inquire of God, Lord, if you open this door for me, an effectual door to go preach this gospel in this country, and they're saying I got to take this vaccine to get there. Lord, those souls are more important. And I already know, you don't let me know. Now, I'm not taking it for the purpose. The corona's over here in the United States. I wouldn't be taking it for the purpose of the fear of acquiring the corona. Nor would I fear at any point the side effects. Why you say, some you say, wait a minute, you wouldn't fear the side effects? No, because the Lord Jesus Christ told me if I drank any deadly thing, it would harm me. If a scorpion or a serpent with the poison that God had put in them, if one of them bite me, it wouldn't bother me. But I always think about them souls. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Oh, I'm so hungry. And some of you say you would actually ask the Lord because he would allow you to take this vaccine? Yes, I would. I roll my sleeve up. If you say, yes, go, my son, go do. Go do. I roll my sleeve up and take it. Because I got business. I got, I got to be about my father's business. That's if that door is open. And that's if he, after I inquire of him, fast a couple of days and pray and say, Lord, can I? May I? He might tell me, no, you don't have to. I got somebody over there. But he might say, yes, go do that and get there and do my will. Handle my business. So I want you people, some of you people don't understand that people been put into positions that their faith is not ready for. Some people have to take that vaccine to keep their job. That's why I tell people, listen, I'm not making no judgment of you. Who am I to judge another man's servant? I know that Luke 12 and 4, they tell me, to whomsoever much is given, much is required. I know what the Lord don't give me. He giving me unfeigned faith. Faith with a, a, just a great measure of his faith. It has grown in me. It started out with just a measure, but it has grown. So what he required me might be the same thing he required you, where you at. But at the end of the day, this ain't the mark of the beast. But when that mark of the beast comes, everybody's going to be required the same thing. You better have enough faith not to take that mark and to trust God for your healing and get, get off this medication and, and trusting in doctors. Because I'm going to expose them clowns in just a minute. 
You have the word of God, but you look at 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 18. The apostle Paul says, let no man deceive himself. See, some of you don't understand. Didn't nobody deceive you. You deceive yourself. I not think that's the problem with the young lady down in Phoenix City. She listened to what they said, but they really didn't deceive her. She deceived herself. The apostle Paul said, let no man deceive himself. If any man think himself to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Because the wisdom, as we look at the next scripture, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Hey, you people never understood and never, never came to the knowledge of why they take up all this money to do all this research for all these different diseases, whether it be cancer, whether it be leukemia, whether it be anything. They have never, ever, ever, ever came up with a cure. I must show you in the Word of God why. You'd have the Word of God with you or just writing this down. In the book of Job, this is where Paul got this scripture from. He take it the wise his own craftiness came out of the patriarch, the perfect one, Job's mouth. God gave him the perfect wisdom of this. He said, the Lord take it the wise in his own craftiness. You ever wonder why medicine got side effects? God got a reason for that. That's God who make medicine have side effects. Some of you say, I don't believe that. Oh, what, 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 what make you think it's not? That's what I was trying to tell the young lady in Phoenix City. This vaccine is like anything else. It's going to have its side effect. And, 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 and a th a close thousands of people have died. They not keep telling you the whole story. They'll, they'll give you some information. And I got this from them. You can Google it. It's been close to a thousand people or better that have actually died from taking this vaccine. Because it's like anything else, it got side effects. Young lady, a young man up in, um, a little kid, he's about five years old up in New York City. I think it ain't been within the last year or so that he, that the, his mother and, and, and daddy took him to the, get a flu shot. And the five-year-old died. I read the article. You can Google it. Over hundreds of thousands of people die in this country every year from the reaction. They call it the reaction of medication. They also call that side effects. And they say it's hundreds of 250 to 400 some thousand people die every year from medical error. Many of you have been taught that God put these doctors on this earth and that that's why we should use them. A lot of you like to say, God gave me common sense. God gave us the gospel. Inside the gospel, there's no common sense. What people like to call common sense is really not even common sense. It's learned behavior. When Romans 12, you hear me quote all the time, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world. That go your common sense that you like to call common sense. But it's not, it's learned behavior. So, Because when you conform to this world, you come in this world and you do what the world has already been, whatever already been going on in this world. That's not common sense. That's learned behavior. But the Lord is telling you, be not conformed to this, for, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what he tells the, the Christians, the saints of God. They that follow him. Because I'm going to show you what God never told man. And I try to explain it to the young lady in Phoenix City. You don't get what you're getting at to me for. These people said they got side effects with their medication and their vaccine. But as a believer, when I preach the gospel, I'm talking to folks and trying to persuade them to believe the gospel. And most of the people say they already have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you've already received him as your Lord and Savior, why you got a problem with what he said do? He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burdens are light. Watch this closely. Watch this closely. When he said he take it the wise their own craftiness, look at Job the fifth chapter. <laughs> I, love the, I love the word of God. This is where Paul took this scripture from. When he was solid, he couldn't understand none of this stuff. But when God called him to be an apostle, he made him understand things that he had read before and couldn't even understand. That's what happens when the Spirit of God is in you. And you get the mind of Christ, now you got an understanding. And the scripture tells you in the book of Proverbs, out of all things, get you an understanding. In the fifth chapter of the book of Job, in around verse 12, I love this. Because <laughs> this was this is what you finna find out why there's never no cure. They ain't never came up with a cure for the common cold. 
And when I go to Jeremiah in just a few minutes, oh my gosh. But when you look at this chapter, fifth chapter of Job and around verse 12, listen to what the scriptures say. He disappointed the device of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Look at the next part of the verse. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. That's where the apostle Paul took that scripture from. But look at the verse 12. 13 says he taketh the wise in his own craftiness. But verse 12 tell you what he did. He disappoint the devices of the crafty. That's why they experiments in their laboratory, all that lab work, all that research, and all the money spent on it, all they had to do was go search the scriptures. See, research and lab work has never resulted in any cure of any disease, not even the common cold. But he is it's the Lord. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taking the wise in their own craftiness. That's the reason God allowed you to get these side effects because it's the God, the will of God that when you step outside the truth and believe a lie, like he told the Apostle Paul in 2 Thessalonians, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. 2 Corinthians, 2 chapter, probably around verse 13. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Now my lines are open. 256, 369, 1688. I need my cash app to go off. Listen, people. I've got three of the Bible studies locations for the state. Today in Gaston at 1230. Thursday in Selma. I would be, we're not going to do Selma this week. I want to make that announcement. I, I had said it last week, we're going to do Selma. I'm going to wait till after the preaching in Birmingham. I'm going to give myself a, a good rest break because I got to start up next week. And we got three of the places. Monday in Gaston. Birmingham day will be Friday at 7 o'clock. Bible study will be teaching Friday, not this Friday, next Friday. The teaching, the, 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 the preaching I will be doing it Saturday, downtown Birmingham, in the auditorium. As you come in the library, it's in the auditorium in the library. Nice place. Nice place. When you come in, there's a security guard right there. You just ask him directions. He's going to send you up an elevator. He'll give you the directions. Where is the prophet preaching at? He will give you the direction. You'll go up an elevator, and you'll come across, and you'll come to the auditorium. That's Saturday at 12 o'clock. This Saturday, I want everyone from all the surrounding parts that can hear my voice and see my face in Alabama, make it a special. You don't want to miss that preaching. You think you hear me quoting scriptures on here? You don't want to see that, miss that. You don't want to, this is a must-see. You don't want to miss that. You think you, well, he, he do a lot without the Bible and this and that. You know, young Tommy and Daisy accused me of having this earpiece which the producer talked to me. He thought someone was telling me what to say. Well, I tell you what, you show up in Birmingham at 12 o'clock this Saturday, Lord's willing, you're going to be blown away. I ain't going to have no earpiece on because I would not have need, I'm, I don't need no earpiece, which is the earpiece is not giving me no information now, but what the producer needs to tell me about callers, how much time I got left, it's our communication line. But he that speak it to me, speak it from within. Show up in Birmingham, I got a treat for you, and so do the Lord. We got a treat for you. But listen to me, because my line's open now, 256-369-1688. Why do you think that God has, why do you think they can't find no cure? There would be no cure for cancer. Let me give you the information why it would not. Why do you think medication can't heal you? Why do you, why you, why you don't understand that? Let me give you some scriptures, write these scriptures down. In the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the prophet Jeremiah, God spoke to him and made it plain. Thou hast no healing medicine, verse 13. He used Jeremiah to tell them, there's none to plead thy cause, that thou may be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. This is what he told them. You ain't got no healing medicine. In Jeremiah the 46th chapter, write this down, verse 11. That was 30 and 13 of Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah 46 and verse 11. He tells them, the Lord tells them, go on up. 
and take bomb. Go on up to Gilead and take bomb, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain, the Lord says, watch, look at, look at 46 and 11. In vain shall thou use many medicines, but thou shall not be cured. This is the Lord speaking. The Lord said, you ain't got no healing medicines. And in vain, which means worthlessness and uselessness. You shall use many medicines, but you shall not be cured. Medicine cannot heal you. And this came out of the mouth of your creator to let you know that. See, healing is spiritual. You notice when Jesus walked earth, he never told nobody take this and put. He, it, a lot of folks like to let these, these old ministers tell them, well, Luke was a physician. Did you ever see God set up a pharmacy with Luke as they went forward? And did you ever see him tell Luke that anybody go to Luke over there and whatever Luke give you to put in your mouth, and it'll heal you? You never seen Jesus give anybody anything to put in their body to heal them. Because healing is spiritual. And he told you in John 6 and 63, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When he say, be thou made whole, when he say epata, which means to be open to the deaf, to open their ears, he spoke words that were powerful, the same words that created heaven and earth. And he's given us words, by his stripes we heal, and according to your faith be it unto you. And if you can believe by his stripes you heal, which you should, the same people are always come out. I believe it, that the Lord would die and rose three days from the grave. You do. When well, guess what? That's a hard belief. But you say you believe that. I'm going to give you an example. And some of you say, where are you going with this? Well, it's easy to believe that somebody can be sick and recover than it is to see. Because you've seen somebody sick before and recover. You've never seen nobody that died and three days later, they rose from a grave. You ain't never seen her. All you did was heard that. You say you believe it. Well, why you can't believe that the same God that heals is the same, the same God that saves is the same God that heals? Why you can't believe him right there? People tell you a minute, I know I'm saved. Well, why you don't know you healed? The same God that told you was, that you could be saved is the same God that said you can be healed. But you feel like you need to go to the doctor because you still conform to this world. And some of you say, that's just common sense. Common sense. Some people say, it's like folk going to die behind not going to the doctor. You're going to die if you go to the doctor or not. That's because it's been appointed unto man to once die. We got this from the Lord. But some of you say, well, I don't think God want me to die when I can try to stay, save myself. When God wants you to die in the faith. Some of you say, you got a scripture for that? Yes, I do. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> like I can actually hear you out there in TV land. Revelation 2nd chapter verse 10, the Lord, the Lord is, when he sent the letter and the Lord is speaking to the church at Smyrna, he told him in verse 10, fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Oh, you mean God wants to suffer? He said, yeah, and don't even fear it. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. He said, you should have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, says the Lord, and I will give thee a crown of life. He said, be faithful unto death. Here, he said, die for me. I die for you. So some of you don't think that that's a requirement. I tell people all the time, man, when, I found, when the Lord found me, he gave me something to die for. I was already living. You receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. People like say he gave me, and he gave me a life to live for him. Well, he also gave you a reason to die in the faith. That same faith that gives you life gives you power over death. The Lord don't told us he took the sting out of death. What you scared of death for? Why, are you still trying to save your own self? That means that you can't be in Christ. Jesus said, if any man seek to save his life, he shall lose it. But if any man will find his life for my sake, he shall find life. If he loses life for my sake, he finds it. I'm not worried about death. Death is a joke because Jesus made it a joke when he rose from the dead. You missed the point of why he rose from the dead. You missed the point of why he died. You missed the point. You're not being taught. My line's open, 256-369-1688. How many of you have ever heard those scriptures that I quote in Jeremiah 30 and 13 and Jeremiah 46 and 11? Please call and tell me. 
whether you have or whether you haven't. See, I know these denominations are not preaching to you about thou has no healing medicine because they don't want to tell you, oh, God can heal you through the doctors or he can heal you through what they like to call divine healing. I quit preaching. Somebody show me the word divine in the word of God in front of the word healing. If you can show me where the word divine healing is, where the word divine is right in front of healing, I start preaching. Well, there's no such thing as divine healing. It's called healing. Jesus is the healer. He healed. He does the healing. Yeah, he's divine, but that does not mean that there's other ways to be healed outside of him. No, because healing is spiritual, and it manifests itself in the physical. When Jesus spoke to the ten lepers, he told them, go show thyself to the priest. On their way to the priest, the leprosy leaves their body. They receive his word. And they knew that if they go in the direction that he told them, that 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 they came looking for, the manifestation of being healed would take place somewhere along the route. Because when he first spoke it to them, they still sitting there white. But as they went to go do what he said, guess what happened? They became pure and healed of the leprosy. My line's open, 256-369-1688. You preachers out there, I know you're listening. You listening. You want to hear what this babbler going to say. You compare me to the apostle Paul. I know that's what they do. What this babbler going to say this morning? This babbler said, what does say the Lord that's in your that old book, book you clutch all the time called the Bible, as you call it, which is the word of God? Hey, I told you what's in it. So if you if you if you confuse, you only confuse because you listen to people who talking about stuff and saying stuff that's not in it. There's no way in the scriptures where God told you to take any medication or go to the doctor. James 5 and 14 says, Is any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church and let them pray, anointing you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord to raise him up. And if he committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Doctors don't have that power. The man of God does. The problem with us is we've not been properly taught. Now God has sent someone to properly teach you and preach to you what is his standard. What mark are you pressing toward? His ways and his thoughts are not our ways and thoughts of people on this earth that are conformed to this world. That vaccine situation. No God wouldn't want you to be putting that in your body. He wouldn't. But if you already have, don't worry about it. It's like anything else with God, because God show mercy. If you still can hear me and you, the effects didn't take over you, now it's time to grow. Can't stay the same, you can't stay the same size. You can't stay in the same place. You got to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to grow. So the next time the situation come at hand, you for surely know that Christ is in you. You be like, I don't need that. I grew out of that. You'd be like the Apostle Paul, when I was a child, I done childish thing, but when I became a man, I put away childish thing. I don't need that. I got Christ in me. I know now that the Almighty is sitting inside me, and I have no fear because his spirit does not bring any fear, and there's nothing that can bind the strong man in me. His name is Jesus. There's nothing. My line's over 256-369-1688. Surely, people, some of you out there have had the herd or if you're not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out why nobody's not calling. Say, you know what? I never have actually heard those scriptures that you gave in Jeremiah. Have you ever heard of King Asa? Who was a king that acquired a disease in his feet? And the scripture said, Asa did not seek the Lord, but he sought the physicians. And it said two years later, Asa died. Asa once knew God, but he turned against the prophets, and he turned against God. If you turn against the messenger, you definitely have turned against one that sent the messenger with the message. Asa died. The scripture made it plain, a distinguishing between you people that think that God used the doctors. The scripture said Asa sought not the Lord, but to the physicians about this disease in his feet. And two years later, they threw dirt in Asa's face. 
My line's open, 256-369-1688. Jeremiah told you, there's no one to plead thy cause, that thou might be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. That's what the Lord spoke through the prophet Jeremiah. And he gets bold in 46th of chapter 11, verse of that. He gets bold in speaking out of Jeremiah, the Lord does. He tell him, go on up to Gilead and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain shall thou use many medicines, but thou shalt not be cured. Because medicine can't cure you. The Lord don't tell you, you don't got no healing medicine. You just got medicine. And I take it the wise with this craftiness. And he disappoint them. I was so intrigued with the Lord disappointing the devices of the crafty. Oh, yeah, that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. In other words, these doctors want to be able to heal, but they can't. And we, the saints of God, have no business. When folks always tell you, God got these doctors here, he got them here for the world, because he ain't got them here for us. Because in the gospel, we have the information what we're supposed to do when we're sick. Huh? We got the information when a pestilence is pulled out that it's pulled out from God and God don't pour his wrath out on his own people. So we ain't got no business to be even worrying about, can I catch a corona? According to your faith, be it unto you, I can't catch no corona. God can't put the corona on me as long as Christ is in me. Mm -mm. I got to be able to fall from grace first. And the last time I checked, Christ is in me. And I got to hope the glory. The boast don't come from me. It comes from what's in me. The almighty God. That's what he said he was in Revelation 1 and 7. I'm Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, said the Lord, the almighty. Huh. The same spirit that raised himself from the dead. People are like, I don't believe Jesus Christ is God because how did he raise himself from the dead? Minister Wilbur said he had to tear somebody up yesterday with that. In John 10, he said, I lay my life down and I got power to take it up again. You're not studying to show yourself approved so you won't know this. He said he was dealing with a Jehovah Witness. He had to put that Jehovah Witness in his play. He said that Jehovah Witness asked him for it, and he said I had to give it to him. I enjoyed hearing it. That's what you saints of God have to do, that when you out in the world, the preaching the people think from the pulpit and from the church, no, it's not the most effective. The preaching in the world, all of us have a ministry of reconciliation. I noticed that... Um, I just had a conversation with someone. They told me about a person that I disagreed with. And by the Spirit of God, I had to speak against them. And they came back and I would, you know, and made a comment to another person that they don't have nothing against me. I want to let them know they know who they are. I don't have nothing against her. Uh, it's, a, it's a sheep. I don't have nothing against you neither. I love you. I feel like you're family. You're from gas, and I just feel like everybody can get. See, I'm everybody's cousin. That's the way I feel. But just knowing, I don't want her to think I got something against her. I love her, but I know she's in error. But that don't mean that your error cannot be straightened out. But one thing a woman can't do, a woman can't take on an authority that God only gave to men, an office. God didn't give none of the office in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, to women. The scripture said when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those are all men. Those gifts were never meant for a woman. No matter what somebody has told you, those gifts are never meant for a woman. You see these women around here talking about their apostles and prophets uh, or bishops. That is a prophetess in the office that God has made. Prophetess. But God don't have no women apostles. He don't have no women bishops. He don't have no women pastors. Okay. In his word, he said, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. See, I didn't say that. That's what the Lord said. We have to line up with what's written because on the day of judgment, he going to break them books open. Now, if you ain't lined up, you messed up because you can't repent then. The time card has been pulled. All time has been stopped. As Revelation 10 chapter say, at the beginning of the sound, of the seventh trumpet being blown. The mystery of God shall be finished and there, be, there should be no time longer. There should be no time longer. See, that's why all these people who believe that rapture, you messed up. If you think there's going to be a tribulation period that takes place after God catch the saints up, no, it's not. The tribulation is going to come before God come back. He said that in Matthew 24 and verse 29. 
in me at the tribulation of days shall you see the Son of Man coming in clouds in great glory. It's going to be like a parade coming in the sky. Everything in heaven coming with him. You don't want to miss Saturday, 12 o'clock, Birmingham, Alabama. 21st Street, Birmingham Library, downtown. You don't want to miss it. Why is it so quiet? Why are my lines? Are, uh, are you people in a state of shock? Did it bother you that I said they'll never find a cure for cancer, leukemia, any other diseases? They ain't never found a cure for the common cold. They can only treat the symptoms of the actions of a disease. They could never. The medicines they give you, they could never. Do it feel like I'm a barrier of bad news? Well, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You, when you, you become an enemy with God. I didn't write it. I just read it, quoted it to you, and you can read it. I tell you, I don't tell you what it say only. I tell you where it's at so you can go there yourself and look for yourself and be persuaded yourself by what is written because heaven and earth going to pass away, but that which is written not. My line's open, 256-369-1688. This is not a replay. This is not a replay. This is live in the studio. The other day, someone told me they thought that they saw replay on Friday, and I said, Man, maybe that's the reason young William didn't call. I'm still looking for William to call because he told me he would call in with his question or comment. He wanted to be over the air. I'm blown away. Somebody just called me to let me know that we're not having no problems technically with the lines, that you can reach me, 256-369-1688. One of the faithful listeners out there, can you just call in and say, hey, prophet, we can't reach you. Bye, prophet. I'll be fine with that. I just want to know. I, I, I'm blown away by this, this William out of Daysville, how I did not, I wanted him to call in with his comment or question because he didn't tell me, he, he said he didn't want to talk about it to me. He said, but he wanted to talk about it to me over the air. I'm always prepared. I said, I'm fine. I didn't do like most folks, get curious. Well, I wonder what he is. I didn't try to get it out of him. Out of him. Why don't you just go and ask me that where I could be prepared? I'm always prepared when I step up in here. Why? Because he that sent me is with me. I ain't never scared. You think I open these lines up like this? If I was scared, I preach against all these things. You think I would be scared? Wouldn't I be scared? If I was scared, I'd be scared to open the lines up because I'd be thinking somebody might call in and make a fool out of me. They might call in and show me up. See, but my trust ain't in me. He that sent me is with me. You can't show up Jesus. The Pharisee, the Sadducee, Sadducee couldn't show him up, so I know you can't show him up. I got him with me. I ain't never worried about a thing. No fear. You don't see me shaking and trembling and traking. Hey, my line's open, 256-369-1688. Will anybody call in just to let me know? Brother, there's a communication line. We can, you can, you, you, uh, the lines are open. Because I'm surprised at what I've been talking about here and showing you in the scriptures. Nobody had any comments. Have you not read Jeremiah 30 and 13? We got a call. I appreciate this. Go ahead, call you on there. I appreciate you too. Hey, Prophet. This is Felicia. Hey, how you doing? You, you, I see you already got your television volume turned down. I don't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I went ahead and turned my volume down. I just called in to let you know that I, I'm listening. I hear you, and I'm enjoying everything. And I mean, and you're really preaching the truth. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you a little right. bit. See you, Lord, we're a little bit in gas in the big Bible study. We be in gas in at 12:30. Give me enough time to get down there. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Then. All right. Bye bye. Okay. There's no problem with the phone lines. Two five six three six nine one six eight eight. Did I shock you this morning? Are you, you know, in that mindset where they say the cat got your tongue? Are you in that mind frame that I just ain't got nothing to say? Because what you said is right there written. I love what the Lord said. He disappointed the devices of the crafty that their hands cannot perform what they meant for them to perform. They can't perform it. They can't heal. He taketh the wise in their own craft, and that's why you got these side effects. You came up with this medication, just your crafting that you're going to try to do, use to heal. God said, I'm going to take you in that own, your own craftings. You come up with a, a virus, a vaccine for this virus, I'm going to cause the side effects and some of them to die to let you know 
That ain't how you do this. You want your land healed? You, many of you have heard in scriptures plenty of times. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land. Then. Then and only then. And it ain't going to be with no vaccine. You turn from your wicked ways and receive the spirit of God and the spirit of the wrath of God will not be poured out upon you. But God promised in Matthew 24 that in the last days he's going to pour out pestilence. You say you will see pestilence, famines, and earthquakes in different places. God kills with the pestilence. God kills with the earthquake. And God kill, kills with the famine. This is the Lord God that heal and kill. And you better bow down and glorify his holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. That you can make peace with him. That that pestilence that that famine and that that earthquake is not going to hit you because you bow down to the almighty God and receive them in your heart. And like 2 Timothy 2 and 19 say, that nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He'll know you his and you'll know you his. And every, let everyone that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. This iniquity that's going forth, this religion, this preaching things contrary, the denomination preaching things contrary to the go uh, uh, contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ, run around telling folk you can't live free from sin. Telling folk uh, God can heal you through medications and doctors. God just I just showed you in the word what God said. You ain't got no healing medicine. You can He said you go even let you know you can use all the medicine you want to. You won't be healed. Go ahead, call your now. Go ahead, call your now. You know you ain't supposed to tell the Sadducees and Pharisees the truth. They don't <laughs> you. You know what they've done to the Master when he told them the truth. Oh yeah. Let me ask you, who am I speaking with? Uh, I'm nobody. Well, you got a name. What? If you don't want to tell your name, that's fine. Where you calling from? I'm always interested in location. Where you calling from? Lincoln. Lincoln, Alabama, is in the house. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I understand that. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the rest of the devils, the government, the spiritual wicked in high places will be coming against me. And that's fine and well. I understood that when I accepted the call. I'm welcoming them. They, if they kill it, I'm willing, okay? I'm never scared. All right? God bless you. All right, appreciate you. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. A lot of people don't like to tell their name over the air. A lot of people don't you know, like to even call in. They don't like to even hear themselves over there. But 256-369-1688, I'm trying to get you to pay close attention to the Word of God and don't listen to these religions. But you said the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You said that the Word, that you bought a Bible. You the one walking around with a Bible and you say you studying and you believe the things that are written in it. Well, you better believe what he said, that they don't have no healing medicine. And I like you, for you need to understand that he the one disappointed the devices of the crafty. He taking the wise in their own crafty. Don't allow them to take you with the wise. The apostle Paul says, for the wisdom of this world is foolish unto God. Let me quote this scripture right here. I love this one. I can't believe I didn't. Just now I'm finna quote it. Write this down. 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter, verse 5. The apostle Paul says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Paul said your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. It shouldn't be standing in no vaccines, no medication, no operations, no chemotherapy. Your faith should stand in the power of God. First Corinthians 2 and 5. That, not your faith stand, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. God ain't never led you. That persuasion to go get up under the wisdom of man and see could he help you with a sickness or disease, God didn't refer you to him. That persuasion didn't come from the Almighty. It's not in the gospel. No matter how hard this is for you to accept, it's not in the gospel. All the examples of Jesus healing. He did more healing than he did anything when he came. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is full of healings. Not one of them had anything to do with some physical substance. Not one. He either laid hands on them or they went and touched him. The one with your blood, she just went and touched him. She didn't, she didn't ask no questions. She just went and touched him and she was made whole. 
And I'm going to tell you something. I got a special teaching I'm going to do, Lord's willing, tomorrow and Wednesday, if I can get to it. I want to show you people when I start talking about these gifts, how ignorant people are to these gifts and to ignorant of the, the devices of Satan and these ministers. You know, the devil can work miracles, but not the same miracles Jesus worked. And I got to show you and edify you. You had, a, you had a man come to Gaston over the last week or so. He might be still either. He might be on left or he left just this last week, just the last couple of days ago. W.V. Grant. He called himself W.V. Grant. The W.V. stands for something else to his name, initials, but I use the W.V. for wicked vessel. And I'm going to show you something. This man has a gift from the devil, and he's imposing it as a gift from God. But I'm going to show you those. We're going to talk about that beginning tomorrow. I'm going to begin to talk about the gifts that the, that the so-called Pentecostal church has flunked and fumbled the ball on. See, people, when you don't know the word of God, you'll fall for anything. But I'm going to be teaching on the gifts to starting tomorrow, the gifts that are, that, are, that are in the Holy Ghost. When you see the Holy Ghost, God has a gift in that spirit for you, specifically for you, the gift that he wants you to have. But we're going to talk about those gifts. And I'm going to show you how some of you have been so ignorant. You've seen some things that a man do, and you actually thought that that was a gift from God. I'm going to show you it's a gift from the devil. Revelation 16 and verse 14 said, gifts, the, 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 the spirits of devils work in miracles. See, a lot of you don't know the devil can work miracles too. But some of you know that because you've seen what happened with Moses, how he turned his tap, staff to a serpent, and the other magicians that Pharaoh had could turn theirs. But Moses swallowed theirs up. The truth always swallow up a lie, okay? My line's open. We still got time for another caller. My line's open, 256-369-1688. W.B. Grant is one of the biggest false prophets that ever walked. He got, a, he, he got that hand that the devil have gave to many. Some of the same things he can do, I've seen, a, I, I heard of this false prophet, he's dead. Now, God killed that sissy out of Birmingham. His name was Eric Smith. He called himself an apostle. This man would stand up in a church congregation and let the congregation know his church was full. He would let the congregation know him being a man slept with another man the night before and asked them to forgive him. But he could do some devil-working miracles that the people couldn't discern that those miracles was of the devil and not of God. They actually believed that God was with this sissy. God ended up sitting there killing that sissy with AIDS. Yeah, I said this. I speak the thing bold enough that most folks ain't bold enough to say. That's why I'm built like that. I'm built how God built me. I'm going to be exposing W.B. Grant tomorrow and show you all those folks who ran over there thinking that he was doing something. It was of the devil. But because you don't know God, you don't know the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. When you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost knows the difference between the working of miracles from devils and the working of miracles of God. Nicodemus told us. When he came to Jesus by night, he said, listen, we know that thou art a teacher that come from God because no man can do the, the works that you do and the miracles you do except he be from God. They had seen miracles before, but they had not seen miracles in this fashion. But Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater, because I go into the Father. Then the word more in number, because when I go to the Father, I'm going to get in all of you. In all of you, you can go out and just work them. You can do all the things I did in greater number. But you would never do a greater power than me because I'm the one going to work the power out of you. But Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do. I'm going to show you some works that you, these guys have been doing, and then it is not God. Just wait. You don't want to miss the show tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. You, in the surrounding area of Gaston, Anniston area, Lincoln, that's not too far for you to drive to Gaston, Tyler Digger, Cow Mugger. Some of you say, where's Cow Mugger? People in Cow Mugger know they know where it's at. Jacksonville. I had a young lady call from Jacksonville, Alabama one day. I don't know if you're looking or not. Come to the Bible study. 12.30 today. On Mondays, it's always at 12.30. For Gaston, Birmingham going to be Friday night at 7. Selma going to be, I'm a, I don't have the time. It's going to be Thursdays, but I don't have the exact time yet. I want to get with the people in Selma and see what the best time for them. But listen to me, people. 
It's time for you to be taught. It's time for you to be edified that you be not tossed to and fro with every old winter doctrine that come through. Quit following what's trending. Because that what's trending, if it's not the word of God, is of the devil. My cash up didn't go out one time, and I need the finances. You see my cash up, dollar sign, my bus, zero, one, two, three, four. You didn't want to give another way besides cash up. You might not have cash up. Give me a call after the show, 205-568-7038. You just want to give me a call and ask questions or make comments to me after the show. 205-568-7038. I know a lot of people don't like talking on television. I already know that. But today the Lord gave you some information. You want to know about this vaccine? God don't have no healing medicine. God made that plain to you. You don't, these people in the world don't have no healing medicine. He said, you can take many medicine, but you won't be cured. We saw this, Jeremiah 46 and 11, Jeremiah 30 and 13. And Job, the patriarch, spoke it out of his mouth that God disappointed the vices of the crafty, <laughs> that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And the next verse, he said, he taketh the wise in his own craftiness. And that's what the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 and 18 and 19. Said the wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in his own craftiness. It's foolishness with God. It needs to become foolishness with you, too. If you are of God, whatever foolishness with God, it's got to become foolishness with you. Because his ways got to become your ways. His thoughts got to become your thoughts. There's no way you're going to ever be born again with thinking with that same mindset that you had before you came to Christ. You're going to have to get rid of one. You can't go north and south at the same time. The scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. You can't believe God and the doctors. You can't believe God and the CDC. Two different directions. Two different directions. Listen, let me just make sure you understand. I will be back in the morning, but it will not be at 10 o'clock. It will be at 11-ish. After the sports media day, I will be here between 11, okay, 11-something. Just stay tuned. It's going to either be between 11.15, 11.30. But as you watch, watch the sports media. Just watch the sports media. When they go off, I'm on. I'll be here. Just watch it. But thank God for each and every one of you. Um, give me a call after the show. You didn't want to give me a, they didn't want to talk with me. Give me a call after the show. How much time I got there, Rob? 30 seconds. 205-568-7038. See you all, Lord's willing. Remember tomorrow I will be live. 11-ish. God bless you. The prophet speaks.